cool. All right. So, the real update number two. I made a second one, but uh, accidentally had the commentary turned off on my Elgato. So, it was canceled out. Um, I've been doing Yakuza 2. I've got about four hours of that recorded. Sorry, I have to blow my nose. It is not COVID, but I've been fighting the sniffles from the house party that I went to because it was outside and it was Halloween in Washington off the bay, so it was cold as fuck. Um, so, haven't been super recording like I want to but I have been trying to make myself record since feeling cool and like I deserve love and the things that I want. Um, Thanksgiving happened. We celebrated a day early. I'm recording this on the real Thanksgiving or the day after. Technically it's five in the morning the day after. Uh, I've officially recovered my timeline all of my repressed memories are surfaced. I know who I am, roughly. And so I figured I would probably go through that timeline with you guys here in a second when we get to the camping section. But, uh, I'm feeling okay, I'm trying to figure out how to live each day for the next one now. Get yourself sorted. We'll be deployed shortly. But all in all, Hostile I'm doing pretty good Watch the skies. and glad. Oh fuck. What the hell? Oh, somebody else was shooting me. That makes sense. Aha. Playtime's over, oh, mate. You're now. going to the war zone. Um. to be happy again. Battle Royale. Why? Avoid um, the gas. Get to the safe zone. Find the things that I want now that I know more generally speaking of what I want. Which we'll get into here shortly. I realize with the other two updates that I've been burning a lot of everything that I wanted to say right here. And like doing it really quickly and rushed and kind of curt and maybe cold hearted and then being ultra fucking quiet and try hardy while camping afraid for my life um and I figure maybe we can fill some of that camping quiet Let's 
good and all, but not good for what I need. Jesus fucking Christ, okay? And this thing. And it's a burst. Okay. I don't like that busted out window. Okay. <clears throat> cool, that's all the way over there. <clears throat> So, first, I was primordial space dust, wondering what it would like be like to enter a fleshy fun suit that is a human body. Enemy UAV overhead. Whatever the fuck that is. However the fuck that existence works, whatever your belief is, who cares. Then... Uh, my mom and dad loved each other at one point in time and had me because I honestly think that kids don't come to existence unless both people love each other at the time of, you know, banging. And, uh,. So, that happened, I was born, my parents split up when I was two, they still loved me separately, I went and visited them and stuff, it was all fun and dandy, and then when I was three, my grandmother, my on my dad's side, had emus and they picked at my face trying to take out my eyes uh, and I have three scars two on the right side and one big one on the left side of my face really light because they're old as fuck but for the longest time I thought I'd fallen down the stairs uh, learning to walk which didn't add up with my walking stories of not walking until I could run. So, you know, there was that weirdness. I think people are converging. Uh, so that kind of really sucked. I became the Emu Slayer, having to give titles to my new terrible adventures so that they feel better and I don't hate myself as bad for the outcome. It's not damage, but cool titles because my grandparents then had to immediately sell the Emus to hide their mistake and keep, try to keep it secret. Uh, so that means that you sell that to a butcher, and the butcher's not gonna raise those. Emu Slayer Dylan was born that day. Uh, when I was three, when I was four, my grandmother was swatted. So, for meth and other hard drugs, and it was me pulling in with my mom's boyfriend at the time in Nevada license plates that said it 
in motion because they thought they were going to score a bigger fish than they were going to. I mean, they were going to hit the place anyway, but because we showed up out of the blue in a surprise visit to her, uh, they thought they were going to catch a bigger fish. And so I became, I earned the title Scared Straight that day when I was swatted at four. Uh huh. So there was that one. Oh yes, come to me. No? Um, scared straight at four. Then at five, um, my grandma tried to kidnap me again, the one with the emus. Gas is moving in. You safe zone located. Uh, then at age six, it was, uh, I was held back in first grade after being in private school, and the really old teacher made me completely doubt my intelligence and ability to do things. I mean, I had dyslexia and stuff, but in Montessori, the private school I was going to in elementary, it wasn't a problem. When I went to her class, I was suddenly a trouble student entirely bad, entirely stupid, held back a year, um, I didn't have confidence in myself. Then, at, uh, at seven, it was a pretty generic year. I mean, I didn't, it wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. It was pretty meh. At eight, I was raped, so I tasted the rainbow, and it is meh by the first boy crush that I had. I thought it was best friend. It never really quite sounded right. And I realized tonight that it was uh, my first boy crush, and I really don't want to ever have another one. So I haven't been dealing with males very often, especially not in person. Just can't trust them, you know? Uh. Then. At nine. Uh. I was taught the art of stealing by some Jewish boys in the apartment complex that I was growing up in, the Smiths across the way. They knew that, uh, they covered more than enough with their overhead charges for like the expected to be stolen products that you could easily go in there as a kid and steal whatever candy you wanted whenever you wanted and it wouldn't fucking matter because it was insured. Uh, karma killing me for giving that one away. <laughs> Set time, mate. You'll be out there soon enough. Uh, then at ten, 
my grandma had died, my great grandma, the really coolest one, my the person, my you number one fight, fan. You to the front line. But if you lose, you're she done. passed away. It was her time. Time to earn and your freedom, soldier. I learned that some things, your love just really isn't strong enough to keep from happening. I wanted her to be able to stay alive long enough to be able to stay alive. And that didn't happen. Uh, but it's okay. I mean, sort of. Uh, then middle school was pretty good and decent, 11, 12, and 13. Uh, some friends, some decent situations, bad Halloween cross-dressing incident where the kids were telling me to do your dishes, bitch, and... Uh, really made me not want to dress up in costume ever again. Still really can't. I want to do some cosplay one day. That would be really cool. Like Edward Elric. And eventually if my confidence is high enough. Uh, Alex Louise Armstrong would be fun. I was growing my hair out to do... Uh, Edward Elwert Greg for Halloween this year and then when I cut it for my magic spell that I did uh I didn't really have a backup plan I've now thought of a black backup plan with my purple round Lennon glasses to be um Lennon Kennedy from Resident Evil so if John Lennon was uh, Leon. Uh, I think that would be a pretty good cosplay that I could pull off with the dirty brown hair and stuff. Uh, so, 13, 14, freshman year of high school, thought it was going to be pretty terribly horrible and not great. Uh, and it turned out pretty good for the most part. And then things started getting really tense with the old lady that was living with us. And, uh, um, my stepdad, he was, I think, cheating on my mom at the time and running off to the fire station all the fucking time. Uh, and just being right old fucking brick and instilling in me a fear of driving because he learned to drive in the military where you kill people with the cars and he talked about that shit and I just I don't do that I'm not gonna learn cars that way oh fuck and it went that would have been a good chance to practice that shot and it went dead just as I found them, uh, uh, so then those things started getting tense, and then I lost my finger to the hazing incident when the seniors were trying to lock the freshmen in the locker room at the last week of the school year, and I just wanted to get out before they did, and so I put my hand in the door and pulled with all my strength, and I'm guessing that I pulled pretty good, because all of a sudden it went from a stalemate in keeping the door open with my foot there to instantly losing twice because it pounded into my this? foot uh, so much and it was starting to hurt that I pulled my foot out and then my hand and it caught my finger and that's how I lost the tip of one finger and split the other one into a butt chin because uh, it needed a skin graft on it because uh, the middle finger was sh split right down the middle of the bone in twain uh, and then that's when I started feeling the pressure from my stepdad that I owed lots and lots of money and my entire existence 
and well-being to them and their generosity. I needed to pay back with babysitting and giving things up and shit like that, so I started reclusing and not having, not wanting to invite friends over. Barely doing chess club that I started my, uh, oh wow, I'm already being hunted? Well, fucking shit. Uh, oh, and that year, oh, in fourth grade, I'd had a best friend who was shot, and the school had lied and hidden that. I thought he'd moved away suddenly, because he was one of the Levitts, the family members in the town, the founding family, fucking everybody knew him, so somehow moving away happened. His family stayed there, parents stayed there, he moved away though. That happened in fourth grade in my freshman year of high school before the hazing incident. One of my friends had intentionally not uh, dodged in chicken on the semi and lost his arm and bled to death and then my sophomore year of high school I connected with this girl at the very beginning of the year and then on the Christmas break I'd asked her out to a movie date and like we'd really cuddly like I'm a super slow going person especially with the rape and everything so uh consent don't do second guess signals it really is a you have to tell me you like me shit uh in order for me to understand so asking her to the movies was big and so when she immediately ghosted me after the movies, I thought I'd done something terribly wrong and was unlovable in the hand and the... So I really didn't try to date again after that. Uh, and then my cousin hung himself. Uh my sophomore year then my junior year I did, fuck they had a shotgun they knew that I was camping there so they waited until the thingy was done gotcha um then uh my junior year I started up the chess club really hard in the middle uh, and kind of regained a joy for life there and then a third person a friend of mine from middle school just a minor friend unfortunately but <laughs> that sounds so terrible to say especially because but he killed himself uh, pills I believe Um, and so that was just kind of a blag year for me. My senior year was okay. I had nothing but time. We only had three electives though in the eight class periods that I had. Six of them were electives, two teacher's aid, two uh, digital design and two home economics. No, one home economics, one student council. Uh, 
and one math and my English credit, which were the mandatory. If I had a vehicle or even a license or friends to drive me anywhere, I could have probably gotten out of school with the early periods or whatever. And being 18, I definitely could have signed myself out. Uh, and not needed those six electives. Uh, instead, I did the that and then math. And so because there was just six periods of doing nothing, one of my teacher's aides being for home economics. Uh, and then the other one being teacher's aid. Uh, no, two being, yeah, the one being home economics and one being teacher's aid. I ended up being teacher's aid for home economics for the other period, so I had it twice. And then teacher's aid for digital, digital design and digital design twice. And then teacher's aid, no, digital design twice on its own. Teacher's aid for the library. And then once I did math, I got teacher's aid for um, the remedial class, which wasn't really the remedial class, but it was all the people that they didn't know what to really do with because they were all taking different online classes because we were such a small garbagey school. Uh, I ended up being the TA for that class but nobody ever asked for help on the assignments because they were all easily done on the computer so why ask the high school Enemy student UAV there. So I played a lot of chess that period. And did the chess club defied my stepdad telling me that I was going to kill people if I joined football by tackling them wrong and joined football. Enemy UAV overhead. Uh, and then got my wrist sprained on the second week of practice uh, in a practice with my team. And so I became the cameraman and water boy, which, I mean, I did well, and I got to play magic and stuff with the coach, and it was all well and good, but not the greatest fun time experience. Didn't get a date to my senior prom or any of the dances, so I DJed, and they didn't really like my music selection. Graduate didn't get the chance outside of my SUU scholarship to get any funding from FAFSA. Missing information from some parent stuff. And, uh... So didn't go to school, didn't capitalize on that. Uh, stayed at home for a bit, got a job at 19 at Walmart during the, the like winter stuff. It was suggested so that I could get my own things and that was going pretty well and I got a loan for my first computer and stuff like that, uh, which was nice. Ended up after getting the loan which ended up being like 300 of my check each month, the other 200 needing to go to help support my family because I was living with them. Um, get a blue strip of hair dyed into my hair and they tell me I can't work there like that. Can't get one of their hats. And all the time there's a girl working there that has a, I think it was green, colored hair the entire time and it was her entire hair and so felt pretty pedoed about that so I called in every day for two weeks 
Then they called me telling me they really needed me and I could come back with the blue streak and it didn't matter. I was hoping they would fire me. So I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm done. I quit. I was hoping you would fire me. It's dumb. You definitely shouldn't accept me back now. That I've called your bluff. Don't break at the gulag. You've got incoming. Um. So quit that job. Stayed at home for a bit. Um. In March, I want to say. I uh, got a job for Megaplex Studios, which was pretty cool, the theater in town, and uh, I was going pretty good, able to move in with my friends that I'd reconnected with uh, after quitting Walmart, uh, and it was a pretty screaming deal for rent considering it was like 200 for everything and then like a hundred and food for food for the but that was negotiable depending because I had a part-time job and so all I really needed from them was uh, three three-hour shifts a week and when I'd moved in I'd had five four-hour shifts a week I knew they were going to cut back once the snowbirds left because it was a retired gambling town. Uh, and so I asked my manager, look, I get it. I just need three three-hour shifts a week and I can afford my rent. And they're like, yeah, sure, okay, cool. And they cut me down to two two-hour shifts closing when the new assistant manager didn't want to close. And had to move out Guess back in with in. my parents and my stepdad was the only ride that I had there and it was at two so Enemy I had UAV to go overhead. from I had to cover th like seven hours of time overhead. watching movies with my free passes and own money tell work to for work for two hours close and then watch another movie and skip out in the middle when my stepdad could pick me up again at 11. And so I quit that. Fuck that. Uh. Stayed at home again for a while. Couldn't take it. Got evicted. Moved into the shitty apartments in Mesquite from Beaver Dam at 19 still almost 20 get a job working at one of the casinos in the restaurant there the rivers casino uh the rivers restaurant whatever uh for a couple months and that was fun it was a lot of fun being a host i got to play like tetris based on Tetris combined with Cooking Mama, and it was a lot of fun. My brain did excellent, and then the cashiering was easy. Math and money are definitely my strong suit, and that was fun. But all of my money was going to my old debts from the, the loan that I took out on my computer, and... Uh helping out with the family and then my mom desperately needed a babysitter for a friend because her daughter got their kid taken away because she was into drugs and so the grandma needed to babysit the grandkid and work graveyard so she needed a babysitter in the middle of the night and I wasn't really enjoying the fact that they forced me into working as a busser where I was allergic to the gloves 
both sets, the non-allergic ones too, because I was allergic to the sweat building up on my skin and not being able to breathe versus the actual gloves, I think. Uh, and got a really bad rash on my hands, but they told me it didn't matter. I signed a contract. And that said, to sometimes have to do whatever in any department, even the departments I'm not trained in, like um, buffet, cashier, which is a completely different sorting. system, and order menu and everything. Uh, so was happy to quit that job to babysit. I thought that'd be easy. I was really good with my brother, know how to change diapers, all that. Graveyard's my thing. I could watch and play video games, maybe even record on my laptop. My laptop really wasn't strong enough for that. Um, and my tower I couldn't lug to at the third location. Uh... Or tower. Anyway. So I wasn't really recording there, but I was doing okay. I just couldn't take kids anymore, though. A crying toddler like that was just too much at 20. So thankfully was able to stop that relatively soon, like five months. Battle Royale. Avoid the gas. Get to the safe zone. Uh, did a bunch of streaming where I target. was a complete and total fake. And frustrated in myself for that. Found a vendor. Did you surprise? Uh, all the while feeling constantly in debt for my damage, my hand, and my stepdad saying so. Uh got to move out to Washington at 23. Felt really good about that. Was starting to feel like I could actually be a streamer. Got the Twitch affiliate. Um, was going to school for first game design because I have ideas for video games that I would like to see made and wouldn't mind helping to make, just don't know what to do or how to do and don't feel confident in my art abilities. But would like to make some video games. Uh, Primary objective is to kill them all. Enemy soldier incoming. Had to pay to be a live-in babysitter for my aunt and her six kids and gave up a lot of things that I got to do by giving them money for car repairs and shit and feeling kind of frustrated about that uh, Got my Twitch affiliate, 24. Um, then had to cut back on streaming because the six kids were living with us so it was seven kids my uncle myself my mom and my abusive stepdad all living together before quarantine happened then quarantine happened and we were very stuck together Making it ever more tense, ever more abusive feeling, ever more scary of death, suicide, because my stepdad wanted my mom, it sounded like, to die for the insurance money, guilt free, and that pisses me off in my soul and can do nothing about it. Um, 
Um, made really cool friends, Def, Sakai, and Madison. Def is disorder on Twitch. Def for short, I go into the shorthand, but I'm hoping you link him and find him and so I should give you the full username. Uh, what the fuck? Oh. Nah. No. Pretty close to the present now. Uh, Enemy UAV overhead. Made friends with Def and Sakai and Mads. They're my really good friends. Made some other friends with them, like with D and D and stuff. But I don't don't know enough about them to really commit to an saying anything. But wouldn't mind to eventually. I just trying to make some physical friends so that it doesn't feel like I'm putting all of my burdens on my family, my mom, who I care about, uh, really the only one the is my Watch mom, uh, and or my online friends who I don't know enough to really ask for monetary assistance and stuff like that, so trying to want to be successful and make money and do the things that I do on YouTube is hard to want that. Which I guess it shouldn't be considering all of the garbage, but so 24 that stuck in quarantine having to now do all of my unrepression because I just can't take the being shut in with 11 people it was too much started unrepressing all of my memories the rape the all of it to so that I could create this timeline finally now at Thanksgiving a year after it almost feels like because it started a quarantine start to now and uh, so coming out of that I tried to set a goal for Valentine's Day to finally have a date girlfriend because what I really want is a one, number one fan so that I feel good about putting out the videos that there's somebody looking forward to my videos every day like, I look forward to the Rooster Teeth and Game Grump videos every day. And so now I need to figure out how to make a video of my own that I'm looking forward to every day so that people can. And I'm thinking of doing Undermine or like a roguelike kind of like that. So that it's a uh, one run, start to finish, doesn't matter how long, doesn't matter how short, could be stupid simple mistake that gets me killed instantly or what have you uh, but I thought that that would be in a girlfriend uh, so at February I was trying to get one didn't get one couldn't admit to my failure kept pushing it on kept avoiding it not looking on the apps not trying to connect with one then by the time 
I was trying for her Halloween date, uh, no, a birthday date, uh, I just couldn't accept it till right before Halloween when I broke and snapped about hearing about all my uncle's success throughout the year with dating and I just couldn't take it and finally realized that it was the snap for not getting that at Valentine's then admitted that failure got to then think and debate as to why and realized it was because I was afraid of my own Admitted that, couldn't get the girlfriend, had to figure out why. It was because the abuse, the rape, was afraid of my own sexuality, my own body. Um, tried again, established timeline A of trying, was hoping for success in that regard before attempting others, which then became first the OnlyFans and Reddit nudes so that it was like being in a nudist community without being touched by the communist nudist community because yay for social distancing in this respect uh, uh, so yay for social distancing that uh, led to a BDSM group that I talked to for a little bit and got to trade nudes with somebody so I got to sex for the first time and then I connected with somebody and did that um, so a real life person near where I live I have seen naked and that whole shebang uh, completely stalemated on meeting up with anyone though they're very much a one-time thing that never happened again and never wanted to meet up lots and lots of scamming bots that I first told and horror my entire life story and their life story from before being fished and scammed for credit card information so it wasn't even like I got the dignified simple and done with I got to feel like I connected with a person and then ripped off uh, so I'm dubbing myself Podrick from those ones Uh. 
Gas is closing in. Relocating the safe zone. So I'm officially Podrick. Um had a mental breakdown with uh, my mom where uh, my great grandma was put from hero to human standards so now it felt like I was a burden Enemy UAV overhead. Uh, and everything that I wanted and that my grandma did for me was out of sacrifice and shit instead of joy and wanting to and that really sucked uh, that led me down to a spiral where I just needed a win for the day and I'd been afraid to put my head underwater for a while up there like a bitch okay um, I was afraid to put my head under the water for a while because it felt like I was drowning and stuff all the time. Uh, subconsciously, didn't realize that was the case. Uh, my excuse was the tattoos for swimming to give that up, and then my gauge tears to continue to give that up. And then we're in winter and I don't feel confident in my body and too many kids, easy to keep that uh, it was just because I felt like I was drowning and I didn't want the excuse to do it. Get ready to fight. Uh, but I just wanted to win, so I was like, fuck it, I'll put my head under the water real quick in the bathtub, conquer that win fear, fight, I'll win something the for the day, if you lose, you're everything will be good. Um, sort them out or capture the objective. Learned just how a kid can die. In three inches of water when the water shot down my nose at just the right way that it was like a flood into my lungs and I knew that I wanted to tried Couldn't it just wasn't my time my body threw the fuck up immediately and now That was before the party even uh, the Accidental on purpose drowning. Oh, uh, it was before the party. Party helped me feel good about myself, feel like I was cool, was able to talk with some people. Now, just trying to find a number one fan. A girlfriend to connect with in person to have that kind of physical friendship without being the people that I'm afraid are gonna rape me. And or beat the shit out of me or psychologically abuse me because all of that has happened in my family alone. The people that are supposed to be closest and shit. made me feel the worst so it's definitely don't feel confident asking people for things and stuff so going to gas is closing in relocating the safe zone Where the fuck they go? Hostile dropping into the area. Done yet? Awesome. Yeah. 
Um, so I'm now 25, trying to make my YouTube thingy a success for me to be happy about myself and my life the way that I want to. And we are now at the present, after hey, a very great man. Thanksgiving, where I feel really good. And now I just need to accept that life is okay and I'm allowed to be happy and want the things that I want and that it's okay that I don't want. The majority of my family that's around me to be around me anymore. And so we go forward some more days. Enemy soldier incoming. But yeah, we're finally good and at peace with all of it. I am who I is and what I want to be is somebody that makes stupid funny jokes for a living on stupid funny experiences like video games and redefine the way you look at the world. So that's what I'm going to try to do with Yakuza 2, so keep an eye out for those. Laters.